Thank you very much, uh, and hello. Uh, I shall be just going through the uh, project. Uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, I think you can hear me, yes? I don't want to move it too far here. Uh, the Global Orienteering Volunteer Platform was established at the uh, end of the year 2017 after uh, lengthy discussions within the Regional and Youth Development Commission. And the idea is to, similar to Susan's project, uh, to get volunteers to meet with uh, clubs or federations throughout the world uh, with the idea of uh, developing our sport. So uh, I shall just be going through what the IOF volunteer platform has been doing up till now and uh, a future outlook. Uh, the purpose, as you can see, was to uh, get the volunteer to travel to different countries uh, using his or her expertise to develop the sport. Meanwhile, different federations or clubs or even groups in certain countries uh, could uh, ask for a, a volunteer or more than one volunteer to come and uh, help organize or take part in uh, an organized event. Uh, and in the end, this is uh, our slogan, it's the development of orienteering which wins, all parties are happy. Uh, so far, the, uh, we, can, we have 89 people who have registered in this volunteer database from 27 different countries, uh, speaking 29 different languages. Uh, the majority, as you can see, are males, but we also have quite a few female volunteers as well. Here we have the list of uh, people who have volunteered throughout the world. Uh, we have different ages, ranging from 18 to 25 to 65 plus, as you can see. Uh, and the range of expertise is not only foot orienteering. We have uh, people who say they are experts or can offer their voluntary help uh, in the other disciplines as well. Uh, the requests. We haven't had uh, so many requests up till now, uh, but we have uh, 17 from 13 different countries. So far, here are the countries we have listed. And it is not only uh, countries who have registered with the database in the IOF, but there are also other countries who have contacted the regional coordinators or even event advisors who have been visiting the country, or mappers in the region, for example, Iceland, uh, although they are not on the list, as you can see here, uh, they conta contacted uh, Jessaret, uh, who was doing some mapping there, and said, couldn't we have a group of young people coming over to volunteer and help organize events. So uh, Jessare forwarded this request to us and uh, we are trying to contact, find suitable volunteers to take part. Uh, I shall, uh, up till now, Albania, Australia, uh, Mike will be talking in length uh, about voluntary uh, help or assistance in Australia. We have Kenya, which is interesting, Lebanon, uh, and uh, the USA, I shall just be uh, briefly touching. Egypt also is in the process of recruiting a volunteer. With Albania, we have Inge amongst us now, uh, and very kindly she assisted us uh, making a sort of uh, interview with the volunteer and herself to uh, get it published in the IOF magazine, so maybe you have already seen it. And we had quite a few volunteers from all over the world rushing to help Albania. Uh, Alexei from Russia uh, was helping uh, uh, mapping uh, for, the, uh, for mountain bike orienteering because Inge said the locals would be more interested in mountain biking rather than foot orienteering. Then uh, a fixed control network from some Czech volunteers. 
more mapping from a French and Greek volunteer, and uh, an, another volunteer helping with the website, so Inge says, so you see how happy I am about the project. I hope she is still happy. Uh, the U in the USA, it was just a club who requested volunteers, mainly to assist with event organizing for school children. So, uh, uh, from the Czech Republic, Paula and her uh, uh, partner, they went to the USA and spent quite some time uh, mapping and teaching orienteering to school children of different ages, uh, starting from the really small kids right up to the high school in different groups. And here uh, we have some impressions from uh, the, our volunteers. They say, besides orienteering activities, we were also able to do some tourism. We went to the city of Cambridge. We took a lecture at Harvard University. This is all, I mean, it is not only the uh, requester who gains from this project, it's also the volunteers themselves. This is just an example. They were able to watch the Boston Marathon, an NBA game, etc. And uh, Pavla says, we leave, believe that it is the very spirit of our beloved orienteering sport which makes such things possible, which is really impressive. Uh, with Australia, as I said, I shall uh, hand over the microphone to Mike Dowling, who will be uh, talking in more length about uh, what they have to offer uh, within this volunteer program. Kenya and Botswana were two interesting uh, countries. Uh, they wrote to us to say, we have no resources at all. I mean, we can't uh, help the volunteers at all. So why not some Skype meetings and get things started online? So uh, our volunteers uh, logged on and they had some uh, sort of remote aid uh, to start orienteering in these countries. This is also possible. Uh, Lebanon, uh, at the moment, Valentin from France is assisting in mapping. He started uh, sort of mapping uh, from satellite images and so on. And last week he, ha he went to Lebanon to uh, try everything out. And he just sent me an email saying how happy he is and how Lebanon uh, welcomed his assistance. Uh, but, of course, we do have problems. Uh, the pl platform at the moment is not very user-friendly. I don't know how many of you have uh, seen. It's just an Excel table where you can look at the qualifications of the volunteers uh, and try to match it with your uh, needs. But we want to turn it into a more interactive platform. We waited for this to take some, I mean, proceeds in some... Uh, time so that we see exactly what is necessary to do. We have some problems with lack of response. Uh, for example, uh, vo somebody chooses a volunteer and we contact them and they say, oh, I volunteered last year, but this year I'm not available, for example. Or a volunteer contacts the uh, uh, requester and uh, says, I haven't heard any response. So we need uh, a more interaction and this is one of the future prospects of the project. Uh, we have only a few positions for recruitment so uh, I take the opportunity to ask you when you go back to your countries please talk to people about this project and uh, persuade them. It is not only the Federation who needs to apply, just a club uh, in need of some mapping or event organizing or uh, learning how to do timekeeping, etc. Uh, they can ask the volunteers to come and help them. So, uh, this is, these are the two uh, older addresses and we are going to be uh, ta taking this a step further, uh, turning it into a more interactive platform so you don't need to uh, jot these addresses down. 
uh, uh, but if you have any qu questions and suggestions, uh, you can always contact us at the global volunteer platform at orienteering.org. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for the presentations. I'm, my name is Stefano, I'm from Italy. Uh, my question is uh, uh, for Nermin. Um, what are the standards conditions for volunteers? I mean, uh, I, I presume they are offered uh, accommodation and uh, um, food expenses for the uh, staying. What about traveling and other conditions as well? Thank you. Uh, yes, a good question. Uh, actually, we have uh, left it up to the requester. Some countries say uh, we can offer everything, including international travel expenses. Uh, some countries, as I said in my presentation, Kenya and Botswana said we can't offer anything. Uh, what can we do? And we put them in contact uh, electronically. So it depends on uh, what, for example, Australia can even offer pocket money, I believe, yes? So, <laughs> so it, uh, it entirely depends on uh, who is requesting and uh, what they can offer. But there are many volunteers who have agreed to just uh, maybe a local accommodation is enough for me. I, I am going to travel there and do some tourism as well, so why not uh, sort of thing. It's, it's up to the parties, let's say. And as I may say, it's a very great experience to live with the locals. Like when we visited Carlos in Ecuador, we lived with his family. You really learn how people live there and you get really into the club and to the families. It's much nicer than to live in a hostel or something like that. Hello, my name is Barbara Bryant and I am the president of Navigation Games, which is the club in Massachusetts that hosted several volunteers from uh, we got from IOF. Uh, I wanted to um, say that I really like the uh, Australian uh, the requirements, especially writing up the a report on what the volunteer did, and I think it would be great if that could be shared broadly, and I think it would be great if the um, volunteers through IOF also could publish a report on what they did. And I think that the preparedness of the club or the federation to accept the volunteers with a clear plan for what the volunteers will be doing is also very useful. And it would be great if that could be shared so that other clubs and federations could see as a model and get ideas for how they could uh, prepare for volunteers. Um, and finally, we did also get several international volunteers through personal connections outside of IOF. We had two, uh, Violeta and Juanma from Spain and Maiken from Norway, and um, perhaps uh, it would be good if uh, IOF could encourage sharing stories from um, arrangements that were made outside of IOF. But it's been an absolutely wonderful program for us. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your inputs. And we will take it into consideration as well when we will be doing, uh, redoing the platform because we would like to make it more, as, was, as Nermen said, user-friendly. But we could try to inbuild also these type of reports and working plans into the new platform, hopefully.